When you hear the word enamel, what do you think of? A high gloss paint? Nail enamel? Tooth enamel? We use the word enamel as kind of a blanket term for a very hard, shiny surface. But it originated with the process of fusing glass onto metal. Enameling is an art form that is so old, its exact origins are lost. Ancient examples have been found all over the world. A technique called champ levé truly changed the course of enamel. This process forms the metal first, either by casting it, tooling it, or engraving it. Then, small pieces of glass are put into the recessed areas and fired just until molten. Limoges, in southern France, is probably most associated with this technique. Today, you might find processes called cold enameling, which isn't enameling at all, but it looks similar. I'm going to demonstrate one of those processes processes today. It's safe for classroom use, inexpensive, and as you can see, the results are just lovely. First, I'd like to talk about how to form the metal, a technique called chasing. Copper and aluminum are nice soft metals, so they're very easy to work with. I have a piece of 38 gauge aluminum tooling foil with gold tone on one side. I've cut this off of a roll. I plan my piece to be fairly small, four by six. So I cut a piece of cardboard, the same size is that, four by six. Uh, you notice the metal is a little bit larger and that's gonna give us some edge to fold over. So if we place the cardboard on the back side and trace around it, I'm going to be creating a frame for my piece. For successful tooling, I need a couple of things. I need a soft surface to work on. Now I have a couple pieces of craft foam here. You could use newspapers or magazines. I also need a tool with a soft rounded edge, nothing too terribly sharp like this. Wooden tools work very well. I've created a simple sketch, which I can trace with a ballpoint pen. Trace on the back side of your tooling foil. And if you want to hold it in place, you can use a piece of masking tape to adhere it to the metal before you start tooling. A ballpoint pen on top of the paper works really well, especially one with a nice rounded tip. Now that I've finished tooling, I'm going to pull off my sketch and look at my design. First, I'm going to deepen the lines I just trace. The soft metal is actually stretching under the pressure. Now, if we turn it over and looked at the raised lines, now I'm gonna stretch it even further by pushing against those red lines and pushing down on the space in between those lines. This is creating deep recessed areas for the paint to flow into. This is known as chasing. We're gonna leave the lines exactly as they are, but press down with them on the flat side of the tool. You'll notice I'm working back and forth from one side to the other. Okay, now I have a piece here that has been completely tooled. So let's add some color. Now instead of molten glass, we're going to use jazz gloss tempera. It's not necessary to use jazz. You can use any tempera, but they will dry with a matte finish. Jazz tempera dries with a beautiful glossy finish. I have a couple of brushes handy. A large one is easy to transfer the paint from the palette over onto the top of the metal. And if I have a smaller one handy, I can push the paint down into the corners and around the raised areas like this. Now, I'm not worrying too much about staying within the lines, especially up here with the flowers. The paint is going to naturally want to flow down from this, the metal into the recessed areas. One of the things I love most about jazz tempera is the ability to marbleize paint. If I put a couple of colors together and then take a tool and then just kind of swirl it through, the colors don't actually mix right away and I can form some beautiful swirling patterns. Now the paint is going to need to dry for several hours or overnight depending on the thickness of your application. Here's a piece that's dry. Now if I have some, some paint that's up over the top like this, I can take a damp paper towel and because it is tempera paint and it's water soluble, I can just work it away from the metal like so. Now turn the metal over and place the cardboard within that frame that we first used. Now I can take scissors and just cut the corners like so. You'll notice from one side to the other right up to the edge of that frame. That will make it easy to push the piece over and fold it around the frame. Now, if I really wanted to secure it in there, I could use a little glue, 
but I'm just going to fold it and press it down. Bring my tool back. I can work down the edges. And make sure that I've got it folded over as tight as I can. Now it is tempera paint. So if you want it to be more water resistant, apply at least two coats of an acrylic gloss spray, such as Krylon Low Odor Finish. If you'd like to learn more about tempera enameling and see this process in a free PDF format, visit dickblick.com slash lesson plans.